Up next on Line TV, we have an all-new episode of Discography with Lexi and Lily and an update on Donald Trump's campaign hopes. And me, Jordan Bowman, with all your sports updates before this Thanksgiving weekend. All that and more, Line TV starts now. Happy Friday, Cersei. It's been a great week. I'm London King. And I'm Linus Bowman. Now it's time for all of Cersei High School's news and announcements. Let's see what's happening. The EAST program partnered with the Cersei Historical Society. Students or teachers could write an essay about an interesting family story that is now history and winners receive prize awards. The winners of the essay competition were Tanisa Yakwasu Pong in first place, Joseph Denson, and in second, and Addison O'Connell in third. If you see them in the halls, be sure to congratulate them. If you want to sign up for track, you have until November 28th. Be sure to stop by Coach McCoy's room or in either office and grab the packets. For more information, email Coach McCoy or Coach Cooper. Anyone who has already ordered a ring can get it on Wednesday, December 14th. Students will be called to the office. To order a ring or pay for one, go to Johnson's website, johnsons.com. NHS members and Spanish Club members can participate in Angel Tree Shopping at Walmart on Tuesday, November 29th at 4 p.m. I heard a new episode of Discography is coming out today. That's right. Let's see which musical artist we will learn about today. Good morning, Cersei. Hi, I'm Lexi Farron. And I'm Lily Lindsay. Welcome to the fourth episode of Discography. On this episode of Discography, we're going to be discussing someone a little unexpected. We've asked you to email us any requests, and boy did y'all follow through. After many, many requests, we will be discussing Young Gravy. Matthew Hurry, aka Young Gravy, started making music on SoundCloud in early 2016. He released many trap hip-hop songs with samplings of music from the 50s and 60s that gave him a very distinct sound. Later in 2016, he released his first album, Thanksgiving Eve, but the album only got a few thousand streams in that year. It wouldn't be until his next album in 2018, Snow Cougar, where we really saw him make it into the spotlight. For sure. On this album, he released fan favorites like Knockout, Clock, and the song that really got his name out there, Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Gravy, why you flow so mean? Within the first year of Mr. Clean's release, it got over 90 million streams on Spotify, reaching 220 million streams 2022. In 2019, he released his album Sensational, where he started to collaborate with big names like Baby No Money and Lil Baby. His most popular songs from this album include Alley Oop, Whip a Tesla, and Gravy Train. In 2020, Young Gravy released his fourth album, Gasanova. He released hits like Martha Stewart, Miami Ice, and Oops, his third most popular song to date with 140 million streams. His next album, Marvelous, was released pretty recently on October 28th. He already has some fan favorites, including C'est La Vie, Dancing in the Rain, Mrs. Worldwide, and of course, Betty. All I know is chase this dope and get more to me. The single Betty released four months before Marvelous. It became a phenomenon, receiving over 200 million streams and putting Gravy on the Billboard's Top 100 chart for the first time, reaching rank of 42. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Who would have thought the SoundCloud producer would become so successful? I know. I wonder what some of the people here at the high school think about him. Well, let's see what they had to say. Are you aware of an email that you may have sent me last week? Yes. Okay, do you know who uh, Young Gravy is? Um, I really don't know who Young Gravy is. Nope. Interesting. Anything to say about that, Jacob? Uh, no comment. Easton, do you happen to know who Young Gravy is? I've heard of him once or twice. Do you mind if I play a little bit for you? <laughs> Ileana, what is your favorite thing about Young Gravy? His face. <laughs> My favorite part is seeing what y'all have to say. Me too. So make sure to send in any requests that y'all have. Well, that's the end of this episode of Discography. See you next time, Cersei. Bye! Bye. Well, London, I think I have some new songs to add to my playlist. Me too, but before we start jamming, let's take a look at some current events. Former President Donald Trump on Tuesday launched his third campaign for the White House. As Trump has spent the last months teasing his return, aides have been sketching out the contours of a campaign that is being modeled on his 2016 operation when Trump and a small clutch of aides 
defied the odds and defeated far better funded and more experienced rivals by tapping into deep political fault lines and using shocking statements to drive relentless media attention. Army General Mark Milley, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, said his staff tried to get Russia's top-ranking military official Jen Valery Gerasimov on the phone to discuss the incident with no success. Milley didn't elaborate on the efforts, but the lack of communication raises concerns about high-level U.S.-Russian communications in a crisis. A strike against Poland, a NATO member, could be a risk a large conflict if it turned out that Russia had launched the strike. The 8th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals denied the state's request for the full court to hear its appeal of the temporary order against Arkansas's law. A three-judge panel on the court in August upheld a judge's inj injunction against the ban. A landmark trial over whether to strike down the ban began before the same judge last month and is set to resume November 28th. Arkansas's law would prohibit doctors from providing gender-affirming hormone treatment, puberty blockers, or surgery to anyone under 18 years old. It also would prevent doctors from referring patients elsewhere for such care. Well, lately when I get up, it's been freezing outside. I wonder if it's going to get warmer anytime soon. Me too. Let's see what Nevea has to say about our freezing temperatures. Good morning, Cersei. Today we're going to be having a high of 45. It's going to be partly cloudy with a 3% chance of rain. Winds coming north at 8 miles per hour. And the humidity is 51% and that sun rose at 6.44 a.m. on to tonight. Tonight it's going to be cloudy with a low of 26. The snow chance will be 1%. Then our winds will be coming north, northwest at 4 miles per hour with the humidity at 63% and our sun will set at 459 tonight. On to the almanac. The last seven days temperatures, our highs have been 82 and our lows have been 24. The month to average, monthly average precipitation is 4.77 inches and our month to date is 1.76 inches. On to the five cast. Saturday, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 47 and a low of 22 with 1% chance of rain. Sunday, it'll be sunny with a high of 45, a low of 23 with a 2% chance of rain. Monday, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 53 and a low of 29 with 3% chance of rain. Tuesday, it'll also be mostly sunny with a high of 54 and a low of 37. And then Wednesday, it'll be scattered showers with a high of 53 and a low of 45 with a 58% chance of rain. Looks like it's going to be heating up towards the end of the week. Got to grab my jacket. <laughs> well, uh, with all this news, I'm getting hungry. London, what's for lunch today? Today for lunch we'll be having classic pepperoni pizza, Italian chicken parm sandwich, turkey wrap, ranch wrap, berry parfait, peaches, and milk. That sounds delicious. Make sure you thank the lunch ladies for all their hard work. Absolutely. Well, Linus, are you ready for some trivia questions? I sure am, and I can't wait to learn some more fun facts. Hey guys, I'm Nevaeh. And I'm Sadie. And we're here with What, what Do You Really know? know? The segment where we go around and ask students and teachers trivia questions to see what they truly know. We're back to kick it off with this episode, the answer to what year did Washington, D.C. become the U.S. capital? The answer is 1790? Well, I think it's time to hop into some more trivia. What was Walt Disney afraid of? Mice, cows, clowns, or dogs? Dogs. How many Harry Potter books are there and how many Harry Potter movies? <laughs> um, seven books, eight movies. What was Walt Disney afraid of? Mice, cows, clowns, or dogs? Clowns. How many times did Ross get divorced on Friends? Five times, one time, six times, or three times? Six. What was Walt Disney afraid of? Mice, cows, clowns, or dogs? Mice. It's ironic. Walt Disney created the empire around something he was afraid of. I know. Pretty inspiring, if you ask me. Yeah, definitely. Now the answer to how many times Ross from Friends got divorced. The answer is three. I couldn't keep up with all the breaks in between. <laughs> Good one, Nevaeh. Next, we have some history trivia. In which state is it illegal to catch mice? Virginia, Ohio, India, or South Dakota? Uh, Virginia. 
In which state is it illegal to eat fried chicken with a fork? Tennessee, Kentucky, Florida, or Georgia? Kentucky. In which state is it illegal to catch mice? Virginia, Ohio, India, or South Dakota? Mm. South Dakota. In which state is it illegal to eat fried chicken with a fork? Tennessee, Kentucky, Florida, or Georgia? Georgia. In which state is it illegal to catch mice? Virginia, Ohio, India, or South Dakota? South Dakota. How do you even begin to eat fried chicken with a fork? I didn't think it was possible. As usual, we're going to leave you with the trivia question. What two planets in our solar system have no moons? We'll have the answer to that next time, Cersei. Bye! Bye. Those really stumped me. Me too. I'm so stoked about our basketball season this year. Me too. And Jordan is here to give us some updates about just that. Happy Friday, Lions. Let's get into these sports updates before heading into this Thanksgiving break. In local sports, our girls wrestling team will be facing off in Springdale against teams from all across the state. The girls have won state for two years straight, and they're looking for a third this season. Make sure to wish them luck as you see them in the hallway. The Cersei basketball team officially kicked off on Tuesday when the boys went up against the Maumau Hornets. The boys going down 13-0 at the start of the game, but coming back to make it a close game to the fourth, but unfortunately losing 69-72, making their record for the season 0-1. The girls took on the Benton Panthers that was also a close game throughout, but unfortunately in the fourth quarter, Benton ran away with it, bringing their record to 1-1 for the season. In national news that in F1, driver George Russell takes his first victory in the Formula One career with his Mercedes alongside with his teammate Lewis Hamilton, with them winning a double podium. On lap seven, Max Verspantum and Lewis Hamilton made contact, and Max was given a five-second time penalty alongside with Lando Norris while he tapped Charles Leclerc. In the last couple of laps, Max was given the order to drop the position to Sergio Perez, but refused and gave his reasons. Number eight ranked Alabama will be taking on Auburn this weekend. Alabama's season has not been going as planned as they have two losses and not on top in the top four. Arkansas will be taking on number 14th ranked Old Miss in the classic SEC matchup. The Rebels will be looking to bounce back from their loss against Alabama last week for a chance to get higher in the rankings this year. Number two, Ohio State will be taking on Maryland this weekend. Ohio State is having a great year with a perfect record of 10-0. Maryland is 6-4. Six, six they still have a rec winning record, but will be looking for an upset to continue their season. 11th ranked Penn State will be taking on Ruggerts. Penn State has a record of 8-2 and, and Ruggerts with a record of 4-6. The Philadelphia Eagles will be facing off against the Indianapolis Colts. The Colts have a record of 4-5-1, and, and the Eagles with an unexpected loss to the Commanders last week are at 8-1. The Eagles are looking to bounce back this week to continue their great season. The Dallas Cowboys will be facing off against the Minnesota Vikings. The Cowboys are coming off an upset against the Packers, losing by a field goal in overtime. The Cowboys record is 6-3 and, and the Vikings are 8-1, coming off a huge win, overtime win against the Buffalo Bills. The Vikings are looking to continue their season with another win, while the Cowboys are making this their turning point this season. With two weeks left for Odell Beckham Jr.'s possible return, he's currently looking for two top choices for which he'll return to which happens to be NFC East rivals, the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants. The New York fans are excited for the possible return of OBJ because of all the history he has with the team. But the Cowboys are also excited for him to come because the Cowboys are looking for strength at the wide receiver. Well, that's all the sports updates I have for you this week, Cersei. I hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving break. Now back to London and Linus at the news desk. Thanks for all the updates, Jordan. Well, we've reached the end of today's episode of Lion TV. Don't forget to click that subscribe button on our YouTube channel at Cersei High Lion TV. And to follow us on Twitter at Lion TV, Instagram at Cersei Lion TV, and on Facebook at Cersei High Lion TV. Signing off, I'm London King. And I'm Linus Bowman. We hope everyone has a great Thanksgiving break. See you in a week, Cersei.